The hype is real. HyperRadio.com. Flavor Show's on your airways, man. It's funny Fridays. We do it like this each and every Friday night. A little something like this. What's up? It's your big dog, Defunk. And I'm chilling, man. Okay, so, stepping in the building right now, man. He finally got here. He was fighting traffic the whole way, but he made it. The one and only, my man, Carl Black. What up? What it do? What is up? Yeah, man, I'm glad you finally made it to the Flavor Show. Thank you for coming. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure to come up here and chill with y'all. I love I love what y'all doing. I always push it out there. And, right. You know, check it out on all the little uh, social media joints. Yeah. You know what's crazy, though? What's crazy? I got used to no traffic. Oh, is that right? Now I'd be pissed off when it take me an extra seven minutes to get home. Yeah, you know, no traffic from the pandemic, right? Right, yeah, like, because when the pandemic started, I was flying to the bay in like an hour and yeah. shit. Yeah. Wasn't no traffic, I was just getting it. And the cops wasn't giving a damn about oh, anything. Oh, hell no. The cops was like, oh, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that? Yeah, you can say whatever All you right. want, man, you know. Yeah, but now, man, it's out there. That traffic out there. Motherfuckers drive stupid like they ain't oh, yeah. been driving for a year. Yeah. I guess they haven't. Yeah, man, and no single lights either. I, I hate right. that no signal light shit. I don't know if you want to get over or not. How am I supposed to read your mind knowing that you want to get over to the left or the right? You just go ahead and get over with no damn signal light on. Come on, man. Well, you know the worst person is that motherfucker who's taking a left, but they got a bare right oh, yeah. to go left. Oh, yeah. I hate them. I hate him. I hate his ass. Every time I see him, I want to shoot at his car. All right, so check this out, man. This is Funny Fridays. We got the 2017 Comedy Smackdown champion right here. Sure, the one and knows. only Call Black, y'all. Um, man, it's, it's a pleasure having you here today. It really is. Um, I want to ask you right now, speaking of pandemics, how are you getting, you know, getting by, you know, during this pandemic as far as comedy goes? Well, you know, I, when when they did the shutdown, right. I, got, I got back to California on a... Uh, what was that? St. Patrick's Day. Same, the from next where? day they shut us down. From last, where? Last year. From Colorado. I came back from Colorado. I couldn't do that cold and snow. I was like, man, you know what? Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am not built for this kind of weather. Yeah, no. I mean, black I folks, like buying clothes and shit, but yeah. you gotta buy too many damn clothes. Yeah, black folks, we're not built for the cold and the snow. Oh, no. So, when the shutdown happened, and I knew it was gonna, I knew it was gonna be a while. Right. They were talking about three, maybe six months. I was like, this is probably gonna go on for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. So, immediately, immediately the next day I went and applied to grocery stores because I said people got to eat right I said it's gonna be trash medical or food okay I don't want to smell like trash I don't know shit about medical but I know how to eat there you go so I went and applied at grocery store I was like yeah, everybody need a nice sock and shit I'm gonna do what I gotta do I hadn't had a job since 2001 really really so getting back to work in a regular job format uh -huh. was a motherfucker. Oh, hell yeah. I could imagine the nine to five, the grind. Yeah, like, because all my shows got canceled from that point all the way through November with, like, we don't know what's up. So I was like, hey, money got to come in. That yeah. got to work. And then, uh, you know, the wage wasn't shit. It was like 17 bucks an hour or something. Hey, 17 is good, though, because minimum wage is like 13. Well, Compared to what I was making doing what I do and doing okay, comedy okay. and yeah, you know, yeah. hustling, you yeah. do some, work on some independent films and do a little bit of, you know, graphic work and you know how you right. know the, you know the game. We yeah. gotta know a little bit about everything in this. Yeah, business. you gotta dabble in, in, right. in all kinds of different fields. Right, and you know I was used to getting that comedy money too. You know, right? Yeah, every week. You know, and I liked it. That shit. Oh hell yeah! You yeah, know, once I you get a taste, liked it. Once you get a taste of it, man, you always gonna like it. That shit. Yeah, so when I got my first check after working 40 hours, okay, two weeks, 80 hours, okay, and they gave me that check, and they took all that tax out, <laughs> and that check was less than $1,000. Right. I was so mad I had to go take a shit. I, you ever get so mad you got to go take a shit immediately? Hey, I was just talking to my man Shadow about being Shadow so mad like, that you got to use the bathroom. He was talking about he was so mad one time he had to piss. I'm like, damn, that's mad. That's real mad. Yeah, I was I was bowel movement mad, bro. Damn. I just couldn't believe that. And then I, I'm cussing. I'm like, man, fuck this job. I'm going to quit this job. I ain't going to go. Man, what they do? 40. And right. I worked hard. Right. I was, because they put me in the, in the can out. Nigga, them cans was heavy. I got a 46-year-old out of shape. I ain't did nothing but lift a microphone and bare body. Damn. It looked good in clothes, but ain't no strength to this. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I don't know. I was upset. But then I thought about it, and I said, you know what? 
lot of these people been at this store for years and years. They've taken care of their family. They True. got kids. They got cars. They got homes. They, they got kids in school. They making it work. I can make this work. Right. I'm being petty. And I'm, you know, the Lord humbles your black ass when he need to. Facts. So I said, you know what? I'm going to stick it out and keep going. I ain't going to lie. That was some work, though. <laughs> yeah. That was some work. So you life. were stocking the shelves? Overnight. And that graveyard shit is trash, dude. I tell you what. About 4, 4 30, <laughs> brother hit the wall like yeah, a mother. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm like, yeah. God damn, man. I'm going to go to sleep. Go be done. And they going to come out with another motherfucking pallet. People coming in, is there toilet paper? Like, man, look, use your socks. Yeah, use your socks, cut your jeans up, something. Yeah, that was the craziest thing I think about this whole pandemic. I never thought that when Armageddon finally came, right, and the world was coming to an end, uh huh, the biggest issue would be lack of toilet paper. Exactly. I man. thought it was going to be water. No. Toilet paper and Some paper towels. They got together and said, look, I don't want to wipe my ass with no leaves. Right. I don't want to wipe my ass with nothing but good three-ply, two-ply toilet paper. Let's go and just uh, and just take it all over right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I'm like thinking, toilet paper, that's the problem? Yeah. That's, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. of all the things that we need. We out here hustling. Man, I said, I'm going to be a toilet paper dealer. I started, I started stacking the paper outside the fence. Yeah, shit, slinging that. I got that T. I got that two-ply. I got the two-ply with your knee. Standing hey, outside. I got the, to a point. Uh, I was slinging one ply like it wasn't shit. And yeah. I, I was like, I didn't even know they made this shit no more. <laughs> like, single ply. Who wants that? Your, dump, your thumb going to bust through. Exactly. Nobody wants a doo-doo dumb. Hell thumb. no. So, and if you right handed, you eat with that hand. You don't want to do the under your nail. No, you don't. For real, man. Uh, you fuck around and get what they call that shit. Uh, I don't know, parvel. I don't know. Some oh, that's shit. some dog shit. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> shit. cow mad cow disease. I don't know. Yeah. So Fox, Showtime, MTV, and Hulu. Yeah. Those are just some of the um, the platforms that you've been on and that people probably have seen you on. Um, how for for the regular comic who's just coming up? just now doing the nightclubs, just now doing these bars and wherever else. What is it like to transition from that life to the Fox Showtime MTV Hulu life? Ooh, that's a that's a that's kind of a tough question for me cuz I've been in I've actually been in show business and and involved in show business since I was 20. So all my adult life. Okay, okay. So how old are you now? I'll be 47 uh next Friday. So you've been doing this 27 years? Yeah, 27 years in showbiz. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I started off in music, then dabbled in film. And okay. That, and then I found comedy at the age of 30 and fell in love. Oh, yeah. And I was like, damn, this is where the hell I should have been. Uh-huh. I don't know why I wasn't here before. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, got, I, I got in comedy and, you know, just like everything else, like, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm special or anything, but I've always been blessed to be in the right place at the right time and meet the right people and and, and all of that. You know I what tell I'm you saying? What, you're on the Flavor Show, so you're definitely special. Word, word. Yeah, Like, I real. met you through comedy, you That's know? That's right. And and there's a lot of people, and then with the connections I had in the other businesses, I was, I thought that I was gonna do like I did with music or do like oh, I did. Oh, okay. And then I found comedy is a whole different grind, and it's a yeah. by yourself grind, pretty yeah, much. You might is. get a little click together and shit, but you on the stage entertaining people with just words. Yep. Ain't no band to pick up your nope. your slack. No. Nope. You know, you ain't got no backup singers when you when your voice drop out. Yep. And that shit happened to me too in Grand Junction, Colorado. Yeah, wait, you were on stage and your voice went out? Oh man. I I was like, What's up, Grand Junction? Packed house, sold out, standing in the back room. Damn. They, they hollered and gave up some noise and I was like, ah, ah. Oh, shit. Oh, hell no. And I looked at my watch thinking, fuck, I got to do 45 minutes. And my, I could not get, so I kept, I ordered whiskey. I was like, let me get a whiskey. They kept bringing me whiskeys with ice in it. I'm like, nigga, I need some hot shit. Yeah, you need something to open <laughs> them cords up. Right. So, you know, but I did the whole show like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was sounding like, like DOC. You know oh, what I'm saying? Shit. But I did the whole show that way. And, and the audience was with me and they was, they was rocking with me. Okay. And this one chick started heckling me. Oh shit! And I hate she, that. And, and, and she said something, nigga, and the audience turned on. I was like, y'all, chill, 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 chill. I said, lady, and I used the old heckler kill him line. Okay. You know? it, it, it's hack as fuck, but it's funny as hell. Right. And I was like, lady, look, I don't come down to the corner 
<laughs> and kick the dick out of your mouth when you at work. Why are you fucking with me, man? Oh, shit. Just shut it down. The cooks came out the kitchen to see oh, who I was talking about. Oh, wow. Man, this lady was so embarrassed. Her husband was like, we getting a divorce. Oh, damn. <laughs> but it was a beautiful night, man. Yeah. And May G was out there with us on that show, too. May okay. G. Okay. You know, you remember May G. Yeah. Right. And she was dope. Me and her was getting all the fan love, man. It, it this one show, it took us 45 minutes to get from the bar or from the front door to the bar. Damn. And it was maybe about 27 feet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because people was hounding us for pictures and autographs. We was doing it big. That's a know? great feeling, isn't it? Yeah, we was having a great time. Man. Yeah. You know, I, I, there was those times like the 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 first time that I was recognized for comedy uh -huh. by a group of people okay. blew my mind. You know, and okay. I was like, oh wow, motherfuckers really is listening to the dumb shit I say. Yeah, yeah, and they're paying attention. And they identifying with this shit. And they remember. That's the thing. Yeah. See, to be memorable is is one thing that I that I, I had to learn. You know, rem people to remember you and to know you and associate you with comedy right. and with your passion, something that you do and something that you put so much work into. Right. You know what I mean? And, and it is a lot of work. A lot of people think it's easy. They see you on stage and they go, shit, I could do that. Ah! And most of them don't last two years. Right. You know, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. There's so much more to than just being on the stage for oh, yeah. 30, 40, 50 minutes, you know? Yep. Like, the writing part, uh, learning how to write for a group of people that don't know you. Exactly. And learning how to craft it in a way where they, by the time you get off stage, they feel like you, you're their friend. Uh -huh. And they feel like they, they made a new friend. Right. And they know you. Right. So people act extra familiar because they feel like they know you from your material mm -hmm. and seeing you. So they think, they come up to you and talk to you any kind of way because they think you they and they mind you might be their friend exactly you know? exactly because they oh, I went through that same thing man they identify with things uh -huh. you went through uh -huh. and uh, it's sometimes it can be a little bit too much yeah but it's it's so cool and dope to know that we doing this art form that's touching people and you know giving them the courage to go out and do something with they self or for they self or know that they're not alone in certain situations that's that's dope as hell yeah man i i uh have heard people who have been in movies and tv shows and talk to people who have been in movies and tv shows and interview people who have been in movies and tv shows yeah. like yourself and they've said um you know i was in the airport and somebody came up to me and acted like they've known me for 30 years just because they saw me in this or that or whatever so i know exactly what you're saying but that's what happens like you know uh what's his name uh the little dude from different strokes who is that oh yeah uh gary coleman gary coleman gary coleman had a problem all his adult life with that shit because people he we grew up with gary coleman exactly so we knew him we knew that character. Yeah, we, we didn't knew know what, what they wrote for him. And you know, you you get fatigued at some point. Yeah. You know, when, when people bother you. I remember my daughter telling me one time, man, people are so rude. We can't even eat dinner without somebody asking me to hold a camera. And I was yep. like, I didn't even realize it was getting like that. I was like, uh, is that really happening? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you, you know, that's the trade-off. Yeah. You know, that's the yeah. trade-off. But the good that we're giving back to the world, I believe, oh, is... Yeah is you know it's just it's it's priceless yeah laughter is the greatest medicine yeah and i love it i love to see people laugh and have a good time oh man. absolutely man Shit, I, sometimes when i'm having sex i make jokes <laughs> you see shadow face yeah but it's true you, uh, can, you can ask my wife she'd be like he don't stop yeah and i won't miss a stroke either oh <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> so you're an air force brat what is that like yeah yeah, yeah. So my daddy was in the Air Force, so okay. we moved back before you was in the Air Force word. So back before when you had a family they'd let you stay somewhere for four full years. Okay. Yeah, we moved every two damn years it seemed. Every two years? It seemed like it. Damn. You know, there was points where we did. Okay. And we'd bounce back and forth base to base. So you the new kid in class. And, right. You know, so you know, and then as you know, you got the the other kids is cool and they, they hating just because you fresh or something like that. Yeah, they clicked up. Yeah. And then, you know, the girls, though. That's what I love. Oh, yeah. You go to a new school, it's new booty. Yep. I could use my old retired game from the last school. Uh-huh. And get it, get it good. Get it good. That's right. That's but, uh, right. But at that time, you know, so 
my dad, like I said, he was in the Air Force. Okay. You know, and most of the bases went to were predominantly white areas. Oh, is that right? So I learned how to navigate through a multicultural base in that way. And I think that that's definitely helped me in comedy and entertainment. And, yeah. You know, I was a class clown a little bit because, uh -huh. you know, sometimes we would move mid-year. And you'd be in one state, like for instance, in Colorado, they like two years ahead of California when it comes to education. So wow. I remember one year I came here and I was like, oh, this is going to be cake mix. They talking about putting me up. I said, no, nah, I don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I went back to Colorado. I was behind. Okay. Know? So I had to do the summer school to catch up, you know. And Oh, wow. You did? Yeah. And okay. I got left back in first grade, you know. And then uh, not on top of that, I'm dyslexic. And that wasn't a known thing back in them days. Oh, dyslexia? This, yeah, this was before Theo came out on the Cosby Show because it wasn't no Cosby Show. No, it wasn't. At, not at that time. So it wasn't well known. Okay. And I remember the day that I was diagnosed with dyslexia and my dad said, uh-huh, see, you get that from your side. My mom's like, oh, <laughs> baby, I knew I shouldn't have smoked when I was pregnant with you. Baby. Oh, I'm, damn. So, I'm like, Lord, this is just, <laughs> this is just silly. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. But so yeah. So, you know, that was a cool experience, but I loved being the new kid. All right, you know, all right. Because, you know, when you travel, it expands a lot of things. It expands yeah. your mind, your thought. You know, it, it helps you to see the world in a different way. Not only that, you get the opportunity to see more fashion. Yeah. So I might come in. I, we, we left New York and went to Colorado. Man, I was fresh as fuck. Hell you yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had, my, I had some red suede pumas. Blue suede pumas, okay. gray suede pumas with uh -huh. the gold puma stitch. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? I had my shell toe Adidas. Right. I was fresh. Right. You know what I'm saying? I had the puffy coat and shit. The jeans that had one color on the front and a different color on the back. Yeah. Nobody was rocking that no, shit. No, they weren't up on it. Me, I had my high top fade high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was high, high, high. Yeah. I look like a dark eraser in that motherfucker. Oh right? damn! But, hey man, somebody gotta bring that hairstyle back. I'm not going to do it because I got a hole in the top. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it won't be you, but somebody got to bring it back, man. Yeah. Maybe Mike Winfield, he got that good hair. He got that, that good, thick hair. So oh, yeah. maybe he could bring the high top fade back. But you know, know, you know, young dudes is rocking the fades now. They rocking yeah. the high tops a little bit, I've noticed. I've noticed know? that and the shag, too. Yeah, but I always tried to do the opposite of what people were doing at the time. So yeah. when I had my fade and then everybody started getting fades, I cut the high top and I had my Caesar. All right. Then everybody's All getting right. the Caesar. I got to throw lines in my shit. Okay. Everybody doing lines. I got to get Jordan in my shit. Yeah. Everybody getting Jordan. Okay, now I'm going to let this shit grow out. Now I had a fro. Motherfuckers was not rocking fros. Nope. Nope, not then at all. I, then I had a homegirl who could braid and she would braid it and she was cornrowing my shit and fucked up one night. Oh, damn. And my cornrows started off fresh straight and then they all started curving to the left. Oh, shit. And I was like, you know what? Look at that. This shit is fresh. Yeah. Next thing I know, Iverson had his shit zigzagging and fresh. I was like, oh, he stole my shit, son. <laughs> Iverson, man. Yeah, he had some crazy braids. But yeah, and then I got my left, I got my right ear pierced. All right. And that was back in the left ear. Boys only get left ear pierced. I remember that. So I would get weird questions from somebody. Do, oh, dude, uh, these three dudes came up to me. Hey, man, uh, we noticed that you hang out with the girls a lot and you got two earrings. Are you gay? I beat the brakes off him. Oh, I'm going to blame you. And the other dudes was like, he ain't gay. If he was gay, he could fight like that. One, they didn't know what I was doing. Right. Because in junior high, I started fucking. <laughs> okay, okay. And I know that when you raise your hand and have the right answers, right. the good-looking girls want to be in your group because they lazy. That's true. Because fine, make a bitch lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly yeah. bitch going to work hard, but yeah. a fine bitch, lazy. Well, that's because she got to work so hard on her looks. L-A-Z-Y. <laughs> yeah, man, for real, for real. Like a fine girl won't even fuck you proper. She'll well, just how lay there like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Ugly bitch gonna beat the shit out your shit. Yeah, nigga, you gonna you gonna get out the bed with the sheet sucked up in your booty, boy. Yeah, you cause she don't fuck happen here. She don't mind making that ugly, you know, fucking face because yeah. that's her regular face every day. And, and the fine girl, you know, the dudes they fucking they fucking they humping quick. I better hurry up before she realizes it's me. Yeah. So they ain't never got no good loving. Exactly. So they don't know how to love good. Now there's a couple <laughs> fine girls know how to love good. Yeah. Couple of them, couple of them bad to mother, but yeah. Yeah, did they you problems. hear about you hear about Meg the Stallion? Oh, uh, no, nah, tell me about Man, it. Man, supposedly there's a video that shows her twerking on stage and nuts come out. 
What? Yep. Supposedly she is. This is breaking news. Oh yeah, that's um, breaking. All she's right. you know supposedly a man. That's an ugly bitch anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean she's big anyway, right? She got the big hands. No, she's she, real tall. She, it's just some know. balls came out. Yeah, balls came Has out. Has it been confirmed or Testicles. is it rumor in the rumor? No, yeah. I saw the video. Oh snap! Yeah, dude. I saw the video. Um, Shadow showed me the video earlier. Wow. Yeah, man. And it's crazy. You can Google it. It's on Google. Everybody can, can go hey, see it right Google now. Google that shit. Yeah, Google it. Meg the Stallion. And she's twerking and all of a sudden just swap, 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 no. swap. Yeah, nuts. And I know what nuts look like because I got a pair. So right, you, right. Can't, you can't fool me. I know what they look like. Well, you know, in the world we live in now, it's acceptable, I guess. Well, I think... I think the way she did it may not be because she hit it. Right. That's exactly like she what I told been Shadow. Out with it. Like, that's what I told Shadow. I said, and why did you got duct tape on that shit aside? Exa that's exactly what I said. Yeah. Look, duct tape, first of all. Second of all, it would be acceptable to the gay and lesbian LGBT community because they do accept that. Yeah, I get you know. the letters wrong every time. Yeah. They they accept that. And yeah. but the rest of the, the, the people in music and the rest of the music industry and her fans, I don't know if they'll accept it because she hit it. Yeah, you know, that's like, yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> no, no. Now, now, back in the day, if it happened back in the day, it would have been worse because Pee Wee Herman was just jacking off in oh, a porno yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. Minding his own goddamn business. Yeah. And, you know, I want to know how come he he lost his career and right. all that shit because right. he was beating his meat in a porno theater where you're supposed to beat your meat, apparently. Exactly. But who the fuck snitched? And what was you doing in there? And how come nobody ever shit a light on the snitch? Exactly. I'm what like, was the snitch doing in there? He was watching Pee Wee Herman get it in. So apparently. that's even worse than watching the porn. You're watching somebody else. Yeah, you like, man, look at that little pink wink wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's Pee Wee Herman. Uh, and see, even back then, they had to be watching close because there was no cameras, no cell phone cameras, none of that. And there was never a picture of Pee Wee Herman doing it. You know what? So, and that's the thing. There was no social media and all that shit. Right. So if he could have denied it, so I don't even understand how he let that the, the little dick peeper bring him down. Yeah. I would have denied that And fuck that you, shit. Meat Gazer. I used to love Pee Wee's movies, the yep. big top. And he had Lawrence Fishburne in a cowboy hat. Yep. That's pimping. I would have denied that shit. I it was. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne in a cowboy hat. Cowboy Bob or some shit. Yeah, I remember that. I, I bet that. Lawrence wish he could forget about that shit and Hell that would yeah. get erased from history like Pee Wee. It's a good thing he didn't get labeled, you know, and his career didn't get derailed because of that. Yeah, well, Lawrence, you know, he was the the first movie I ever seen him in, Cornbread, Earl, and Me. Okay. That was the shit, man. He was a little kid in there. I don't know how old he was, maybe 12 or something like that. Right. But he was a little kid, and, and it was about this high school basketball player that ended up getting shot, you know? But I, uh, that was a good movie. If you haven't seen it and you like old movies and you want to do some Vince shit, fuck, you ain't got nothing to do. Ain't right. too much open still. This weekend. So watch Cornbread Earl and Me. Good movie. Okay. Cornbread Earl and Me. And right. I'll give you another another great black movie, Jewel. Try The Learning Tree. The that Learning was, Tree? That was a great movie. It's a coming of age story. All right. It's a beautiful movie. It's a great story. It was one of the first all-black cast movies. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was like one of the first all-black cast movies. Black writer and black director, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. That's beautiful. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think it came out before uh, Sweetback. Okay. Before, uh, uh, what's his name, did Sweetback, Sweet Song, you know, right. all that. Uh, so, yeah, check out that movie. I like I like all kinds of shit. I, yeah. love, I just love entertainment. Hell yeah, entertainment itself is beautiful, man. It Hell really yeah. is. Speaking of entertainment, when are you gonna hit the stage again, man? Ah, uh, you know what? Damn, I'm ill. I'm ill prepared because I don't have the information on me. But that's all right. Me and D. Tyler are doing three shows up in Reno uh, next weekend, Friday, Friday and Saturday. I think it's two Friday, one on Saturday. All right. First show, I'm pretty sure sold out. But uh, uh, I know it's up in Reno. I don't have the information on me. I wish I did to share it because I just got it last night. Yeah. Uh, you know, things move a little different right now. Yeah. But, yeah, so we'll be up in Reno uh, Friday, Saturday. And, shit, D. Tyler's up in uh, Wairika tonight. He's That's right. It. That's you right. Know, that fool's been working the whole pandemic. He's getting it. Yeah, D. Tyler's doing the damn thing. Shout out to D. Tyler, too, by yeah. the way. He's doing the damn thing. For yeah. real. Oh, shit. I got no, you good. No, you good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, he's doing the damn thing for real, for real. Yeah. Um, all right, well, listen. 
Uh, give them your social medias before we get out of here. How can they get a hold of you? Hey, just just cold black everything. K U L black. You could go. Uh, what's that? Facebook, cold black. Uh, Instagram, cold black. All that shit, cold right. black. I don't tweet, but I got a Twitter, but I don't tweet because I ain't got nothing to say in that few words. Oh, okay. Uh, characters. Uh, and check out my new podcast with yeah. Jessica. It's called Hella Inappropriate. It's on all all platforms that you listen to your podcast, except yep. for YouTube. I got to work on that, but it's on all all the platforms. And it's 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 pushing the edge. It Trust is, me. man. I was um, blessed to be a guest on there. Uh, what was that? A week ago? Yeah, that was that. Yeah, about, yeah, it was about a week, a week ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, uh, that I episode will be out soon. Yeah, I was blessed to be a guest on there, and let me tell you, man, it, it's it's a great podcast. Listen to it. Make sure you subscribe. Make yeah. sure you follow it because it's definitely one of those you definitely don't want to miss. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, we push the line, but you always gonna find some jewels in there. You're gonna get some good nuggets about life, relationship, love, uh, parenting, yep. co-parenting, yep. step parenting. We talk about a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. and we talk about some real dirty ass sex too. Oh yeah, for real, they do. Yeah. They do, man. I love it. Um, all right, well, listen. I want to thank you for coming by the Flavor Show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. You're one of my dudes for life. Yeah. I appreciate you back there, engineering, doing all this thing. Shadow. Shadow in the P easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say the place to be, but it came out weird. That's all right. I do that all the time. But yeah, all the time. Yeah, and, and the flavor show it is hot, man. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hype radio. Hype radio. Keep it going. All right, no doubt, man. Uh, Funny Fridays on your radio each and every Friday. We do it just like this. Yeah. Make sure you uh, keep it right here for that and a whole lot more. That hype mix is coming up in just a few minutes. As a matter of fact, one minute away. Right after this, okay? HypeRadio.com.